Welcome to your weather forecast for the week beginning Wednesday, August 19th, 2020. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Rinsworth for Longmont Public Media. At the end of this video forecast period, we have the first quarter moon coming around. It'll be up in the sky in the evening. Great for going out with binoculars or just taking a walk. It's, it's going to be very picturesque. Uh, rising just afternoon, sitting just before midnight. Keeping an eye on the drought. Here's our homemade quasi animation of the drought conditions from June all the way to the present week. So we started out this period in June with no drought in the northern counties and some pretty extreme drought down in the southern counties as we move forward into July and now into August. And here we are at the present time. We've seen some of the areas down in the southern counties actually get uh, some water from, from the storms traveling along. It's been more tropical moisture in the southern part of the state. But drought conditions are a little worse in the west and got a little worse in the northern counties. How much uh, drought do we have nationwide? Well, this big outline area here is where we have long-term drought on the inside there and there and there. That's where the water deficit is starting to affect soil moisture and aquifers, uh, maybe even reservoir storage and like that. Other places in the nation, it's sort of a short-term uh, vegetation and crop related uh, water deficit. So we're pretty much in that long-term drought settling in. Just by a year, year and a half ago, we had no drought at all. Uh, looking at the rain for the last seven days, right along I-25, bone dry, bone dry in the west. We know that well. Out on the far eastern plains and in Kansas, and spotty stuff in the southern counties. As for the rain did occur, but uh, yeah, we need more rain. But I've got some good news, so hang on. Over the next 10 days, the temperature, normal high temperatures drop a couple degrees, normal light nighttime temperatures drop about a degree. You can see in the ensemble down here that there are some days where the model kind of consistently thinks there'll be enough thunderstorms traveling around that we get hit. So there's there's some chances here. They're they're not big and they're but they're there. But the other news is very high temperatures. The high highs are way above normal throughout the entire period and the lows are way above normal throughout this period. So we're definitely in a summer heat wave pattern. So much so that we're setting records probably on Saturday. Uh, Tuesday, we hit 58 days at, with 90 degree Fahrenheit or higher for a high temperature. The record was 73 days back in 2012, not so long ago. And if we do hit 90 plus, which we should, uh, every day through Saturday, then we'll be uh, in second place for a hot summer. That was 61 days set in 2000. Probably will be 61. Can we add another 11 days of 90 plus beyond that? It's not impossible. It's unlikely climatologically. It's going to be getting harder and harder as we get into September to uh, hold on to the heat, but eh, it could happen. All right, let's look at moisture. We definitely need some in the state. This is the uh, water vapor satellite image. So grays and whites are moist air, and the reds and browns are dry, sinking air. One week ago, we had a large amount of dry air in the west and up in the plains, a little bit lingering around us, but not much. Look at the change one week later. The western U.S. and the Pacific has moistened up tremendously, thanks in large part to to the uh, tropical systems have been drifting by and dying over here. So some moisture has made it around into the state, and we have some uh, thunderstorm activity that's returned in the middle of this week. For Tuesday a.m., we have the high center right over here in Utah near Las Vegas, giant ridge up here, big trough in the east, north winds, which would normally cool us down, probably make it hard to get out of the 80s, except this is such an unprecedented large high-pressure system. There's just so much air piled up and sinking, compressing, 
that uh, it's keeping us in the 90s, in the high 90s. And looking at that abnormal heat, this is the surface temperature anomaly. So reds and pinks are above normal, blues are below normal. The white is normal, it's not much normal. <laughs> kind of goes straight from heat to cool. And we are definitely in the clutches of this high pressure in the West with high temperatures above normal. By Wednesday noon, we got uh, Hurricane Genevieve drifting onto the frame here. Lots of moisture coming up and around the Rockies and into Colorado. And over the next 14 days, we can watch this process go on. Here comes Genevieve drifting up. You can see the weekend, we dry out a little bit. But then Genevieve dies off of the California coast. See all this moisture streaming in into the west. Really a good amount of moisture by the 27th, 28th. There's a big blob coming around for the 29th. Another tropical system down here. Drifting off and dying. A front pushing down the plains. Bringing in more moisture here. Let's take a look again. The same loop. Look down this time into the southern Gulf of Mexico. And you'll see a, another tropical system that's not named yet coming in and hitting right around the Houston area. There's a cold front pushing down. You can see a dry air. And watch this moisture as it goes west then into Mexico, western Texas, New Mexico, and joins that blob up north over us. So that's September 1st, 2nd, right there at the end. So things will moisten up. That's good news. Here's Genevieve. Uh, forecasted to head up just off the Baja coast and fizzle out and die over the cooler waters um, after the weekend. For Wednesday, with this big high, you can even see the shape of the air flow around the high. There's enough heat, enough moisture, that we might get thunderstorms that have damaging gusty winds. It's thunderstorms with gusty winds and lightning at this time, with this the state as dry as it is, it's, it's just not good. But uh, they do have that marginal risk for Wednesday and again on Thursday for the entire eastern half, eastern two thirds of the state. So hail is possible. It's not as likely as just uh, a lot of wind and lightning. The other big news item is smoke. So from Tuesday p.m. we have the Pine Gulch Fire, Cameron Peak Fire, Williams Fork Fire, Grizzly Creek Fire, all burning in the western northern parts of the state. And the smoke is just circling around the high here. We've got fi fires down in the uh, southwest. We've got fires in northern California, sending smoke around. This is maybe lightening up the smoke load a little bit with very northerly winds, but there's other smoke coming around anyway. So we are dealing with smoke and heat. It was Wednesday morning, everything just continues to cycle around. It was Wednesday late morning, and it's pretty thick out on the uh, plains again. By Friday noon, not much has changed. There's the trough in the Midwest, the ridge over the mountains, north winds over us, and Genevieve has drifted a little bit further along. So with that moisture, we do have some chance of showers. The GFS is giving us uh, five hundredths of an inch or so. Some of the areas in the foothills, around Colorado Springs and Southern Mountains, maybe get a little bit more. It seems to be seeing one good thunderstorm right there. By Sunday noon, the high pressure system actually drifts up. This should Coupled with a little less moisture for a bit and the sinking motion in the high should take temperatures really close to 100 in the uh, lower elevations, shut off the thunderstorm activity almost entirely and just bake us. So it's a very hot, dry, smoky weekend with the smoke just going around in a circle. There's Sunday noon, even with north northeast winds and cool air out here, you'd expect that to be able to come back to us. But the high is so strong that just this is a big blob of heat is coming around into the Dakotas and Nebraska, keeping us in its clutches still. All right, so some chance of relief is visible in the distance. Here's August 28th, next Friday. 
have a trough coming into the northern Rockies, southwest, west winds, uh, there's a total shift, so smoke will, will change and a lot of it will get shunted away more quickly. And with that, we get a lot of cool air into the northern Rockies and maybe a little bit of a temperature break next Friday. We can go further out to Tuesday, September 1st, and we see evidence of a cold front that actually comes down and takes us to below normal temperatures. That might look like low 80s, gosh, dare I even say upper 70s? Oh, I won't. But it uh, will feel good and there'll be some relief for the firefighters as well. So hang in there a couple more weeks. For the next seven days, we see temperatures remaining in the 70s over the weekend, upper to mid 70s. Next week, a little bit of a cool down, a little bit of moisture coming back again. For more local news, take a look at longmontleader.com. I have frequent weather updates on my column there, so you can always fill in the gaps between these early week video releases. This has been Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth for Longmont Public Media. Keep looking up.